Through the years, we have grown remarkably to become an influential player in the financial services sector in both Kenya and Uganda by helping individuals, corporates, and institutional investors build their wealth. We do this through our customized investment approach, our world-class capabilities, and our diverse product set. Our continued growth is powered by various success drivers that ensure we remain focused on delivering quality products and great service. We are powered by the continued strong support from our business partners and internal teams, our diverse underlying investments and customized products, our innovative digital platforms offering convenient service to all our customers. And most importantly, we are powered by our customers who have supported our business over the years. Our wide array of offerings has earned us various achievements and awards. At Britam Asset Managers, our products range from unit trust funds, wealth management, portfolio management, advisory, and diaspora services. For corporates, we invest for pension, endowment, and gratuity funds. We have also distinguished ourselves as leading industry player through our property services, thus helping our clients enhance returns from their real estate investments. We remain invested in delivering growth and increased returns for our customers now and in the future. If you're looking to pave the way towards a better and prosperous future, look no further than Britam Asset Managers, your experienced and knowledgeable partner. We promise to walk with you every step of the way. Welcome to Britam Asset Managers. My name is Sarah Kanjuki. I'm an accountant at China Zongzing Construction Limited. I've been a customer in um, Britam Asset Management. Uh, from around now, this is, uh, I think, my second year. I learned uh, asset management through our financial advisor. One thing I like about uh, Britain Money Market Fund, first of all, is uh, convenience. You can go as little as 1,000. Also, the ease of withdrawal. The interest rate is quite higher than uh, other investment platforms. In terms of information, you get prompt information. My saving objective was uh, maybe in future to start uh, a side hustle. I have a timeline and uh, a, a, a target. It is important for anyone and everyone to have a saving culture. And I think this should start from childhood. You try and train your children to have a uh, to to be able to save. And like people who are in employment, if you don't learn to have a saving culture, so that in future you can even uh, have your own side hustle, so that you can increase your disposable income. Britam has uh, bring up a, a, a platform that is good for people like us who can be able to save as little as you can, and you can be able to be monitoring your your investment anytime you want. What you require is first discipline and uh, patience. You need to have a target. So it means persistence and consistency is very important so that you can achieve your target. Every organization needs a roadmap to achieve their goals. And we at Britam have grown from strength to strength by carefully planning and executing our strategy. Today, we are in seven countries and have diversified our revenue streams in insurance, asset management, property, and banking. Our new strategy was led by Britam's leadership team with deep engagement with our staff and supported by international strategy consultancies. This strategy has given us a great perspective of our competitive environment and our customers today who have more choice. We have aligned our vision, mission, and values to our strategy to sharpen ourselves and to keep winning. Our vision, to be the leading diversified financial services company in our chosen markets across Africa. Our mission, providing you with financial security every step of the way. Our values, respect, integrity, innovation, customer focus. Our brand positioning statement, with you every step of the way. Our strategy is the go for gold strategy. 
enabling transformation focuses on people and skills alignments. Operational excellence is looking inwards and improving ourselves. Customer service involves providing our clients a seamless experience and peace of mind. Innovation involves packaging and delivering products based on deep customer understanding. Profitable growth is being the market leader in all lines of business. What does achieving our strategy look like? Gold means a Britain that has increased organizational synergies. Gold means optimized costs and increased efficiency and productivity. Gold means a Britain that uses IT platforms to deliver value to our customers. Gold means exploiting direct channels and B2B partnerships to serve our customers better. Gold means an innovative and broader product portfolio resulting in increased opportunities to cross and upsell. Gold means being number one in every market we will operate in. Gold means happy customers, happy financial advisors, happy shareholders, and happy staff. That's what being on the winner's podium will be like for 2020 and beyond. Together, let's go for gold. Britam, with you every step of the way. My name is Lillian Mutua. I'm a HR professional. I work with a leading Pan-African women rights organization based in Nairobi. I have been a customer of Britam Asset Managers for close to five years. I have invested in the money market fund, particularly uh, channeled and still channel my savings to the fund. What I like about the um, fund and also Britam Asset Managers is that I'm able to track my investment and I'm able to track my funds. I'm also able to know how much interest that my money is earning. My saving objective um, was saving for my wedding back in 2016. I started the journey by channeling small amounts um, of my cumulative budget to the, to the fund. What I also liked about the flexibility of the fund is that I was able to withdraw um, the amounts anytime I wanted to pay my service providers. It worked and I was able to um, stay disciplined and also be able to account for my money in terms of any withdrawal and any deposit that I was making during that time when I was planning for the wedding. In addition, um, I like using the Britam app. It's a very user-friendly interface. I'm able to top up my account. I'm able to withdraw. I'm also able to keep track of um, my investment and also know how much interest it is that my money has earned. And I also like the fact that I'm able to get in touch with the customer service um, anytime I have a problem using the, the, the app. I'd like to advise anyone who is starting the savings culture, start small, takes a little bit of patience, takes sacrifice, and also takes this. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Brit Term Investments Update. And apologies for starting a bit late. We are right about to start, kick start the program, and we want to start off with a word of prayer from Janet Waweru. Good morning, everybody. Um, let's just bow our heads for prayer. Our dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to interact and have discussions around our investments. We commit this session that is ahead of us into your hands, Lord. We just pray for very interactive, a very uh, educative and enlightening session. And that, Lord, for those who are being able to uh, impact uh, the discussions. We also pray for wisdom and guidance. And Lord, for all our clients who have also joined us, we thank you. And those who are joining us, we ask you, Lord, to just hasten their steps to be able to get, uh, for us to be able to just be together. And Lord, we pray all this, believing and trusting in your name. Amen. Thank you, Janet. Our Esteemed clients, we are having the webinar number one to appreciate your support in terms of uh, the support that you've given us in the business by investing in our Britam funds. 
Number two, this is a normal investment update that we want to take you through in terms of what's happening in the market. So we'll have a market outlook that we are going to discuss and also share with you the opportunities globally and also local. Um, we are also going to again mention the new rate that we were able to improve on our wealth management fund. And you'll see from the presentation the opportunities that came up and why we had to share the good news with you. And um, other than that, I would like to kickstart the program and uh, request um, Jude to start off. But before he does that, a brief introduction about Jude. Jude is joining us again. He has been with us. He's not a new face. He has been with us in uh, 2014. He held the baton. He was the acting CEO in 2014 to 2016, where he passed the baton to uh, our former CEO, Kenneth Canew. And Jude is now back. And uh, we are actually going to rely on his leadership skills and his experience in terms of taking the company to the next level. And without further ado, we'd like to start off and we can move on to the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Njeri. Uh, I'd like to first start by saying it's, uh, it's good to be back. Uh, why I've missed out the word great is because uh, uh, I'm coming back in trying times. Trying times, uh, we're in the middle of a pandemic, uh, th the third wave. And uh, I know it's trying times economically and also from a, from a health perspective. Uh, but for you as our esteemed clients, I would say as Britam, as our key tag, as our tagline says, we are with you every step of the way. We are looking to support you these trying times and also looking at, uh, when you look at asset management company, we are looking to build your wealth during these trying times. First, I'd like to start by introducing the team that manages your money, uh, invests the money for you. First, I'd like to start with the team in charge of, charged with distribution and uh, client service. With distribution, uh, we have Jerry. Jerry, who made the opening remarks as our head of business development. Also in uh, client service, I'd like to introduce uh, Patricia Kimama. Patricia Kimama, if she could just say a word or two. Um, good morning, everyone, um, and thank you very much, Jude, for this opportunity, and uh, thank you to our customers for joining us. My name is Patricia Kimama. Um, I look after the operations and IT departments. Uh, so in that scenario, I, my team is the one that then responds to all your customer queries, ensures that your money is uh, safely invested and well invested, and responds to every, any concerns you have. Uh, we also look after the systems and we ensure that we're giving you solutions uh, online that are effective and uh, that are responsive. Asante Sana. Thank you. Thank you, Pat Patricia. I'd like to go to the team that is in charge of uh, product and product capability. And here in product capability, we have various uh, segments. I'd like to start with the, C, uh, with the AMC Chief Investment Officer, uh, James Mose. James Mose could just say a, a word or two, but I know we'll be, we'll be getting a full brief from you. Okay, thank, thank you very much, uh, Jude. Uh, my name is James Mose. I'm the Chief Investment Officer of Beach of Asset Managers. Um, welcome all to uh, today's uh, webinar. I'll be coming back shortly to take us through um, the um, investment and market updates. And uh, we are the ones are charged with the responsibility of ensuring that the returns are competitive and your money uh, is safe. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, Mose. Also in product capability, uh, I'd like to introduce Janet Waweru. Janet Waweru could say one word. She's our head of, uh, she's our chief finance officer. 
Uh, thank you, Jude, and uh, good morning, everybody. We'd like to appreciate each and every one of our clients who's been able to join uh, this webinar today. We trust uh, that it will be very informative and also an opportunity to understand what asset management is doing for you as a, as a fund manager. Thank you very much. Uh, Jude, back to you. Sorry, we're having some technical issues. So I'd like to introduce our head of uh, legal, Miriam. Miriam. Thank you, Jude. And um, good morning, everyone. Um, good morning, our investors. Welcome to this webinar. Thank you for making the time to join us today so that we can be able to share with you a market update and some of the um, goodies we have lined up for you. Uh, my name is Miriam Kahiro, as you've heard. I'm the head of legal. I'm the one who handles the documentations that you sign, the contracts that you sign. We support from the back office when we have um, queries from um, you, our clients, and we try to make sure that we support the commercial and the business side to be able to deliver um, well on the products that we have. So Karibuni Sana, looking forward to interacting well and, um, and uh, wishing you a good meeting ahead. Thank you, Jude. Back to you. Thank you, Miriam. And I also would like to introduce our head of marketing, Susan. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's good to see you all here. Uh, we are really excited about what we are going to share with you today, and we continue um, enjoying partnering with you. Thank you for your business and continued support. Ahead of risk, Sami Kiratu. Uh, good, good morning, everyone. Uh, as we've heard, my name is Sami Kerato. I take care of uh, compliance uh, risk, as well as uh, the uh, risk uh, management uh, for the entity, including uh, the fund in discussion. Uh, you're most welcome. Uh, and I believe that uh, the, the session will be uh, useful for all the customers and uh, it will be as well uh, more informative. Karibu Nisana. the people aspects of the business. This is Ivan Bora. She's uh, having some technical issues, but um, again, I believe we can proceed. We can proceed. We are having some technical issues uh, connecting Eva. Uh, Thank you, Jude, for the introduction. I think I, it would be befitting to actually introduce Jude because uh, he's our new principal officer. I've seen some questions being asked. He is the principal officer of Britam Asset Managers, and he is responsible for the strategic direction and leadership of the company. And this is both in Kenya and Uganda. So welcome, Jude. And like I mentioned, he has been here before. Maybe just to know that he is a, a chartered financial analyst who has worked with Britam over eight years. Other than that, he wears another hat. He is a member of the Institute of Certified Public Accountants and um, CFA Institute and CFA South Africa. Um, Jude, again, has been um, held previous positions in NIC Capital and Centum Investments and Fit Kenya. Just to mention that he's also a part-time CFA lecturer at Strathmore, so some of you might have seen him there. Another thing is he's an avid mountain climber, having hiked Mount Kilimanjaro four times, Mount Kenya twice, and he's looking forward to climbing Rwenzori Mountains. Once in a while, clients will be able to see Jude walking, and please note it is not out of stress. It is just his strategy, the same way we have people who like uh, golfing, so Jude likes to walk around a lot. So you'll see him walking around in uh, Upper Hill 
and that's the time he's strategizing, maybe looking for new opportunities, and again, just taking a breather. So Jude, welcome, and uh, you can actually now start your presentation. Thank you, Njeri. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Njeri, for the, for the words. I would say uh, when you see me walking, just know I'm trying to keep fit. Uh, you know, with the, with the COVID, uh, the COVID situation, most of us have been uh, forced to have a, a sedentary lifestyle, not, not interacting, not, uh, trying to, to keep, uh, keep safe. So uh, in terms of uh, my brief uh, presentation, I would say for me, it's indeed an honor to sit here and to present to you uh, our esteemed clients. Uh, from where I'm sitting, I've been in Britain for the, for the past, uh, for the past eight, eight years. But when I look at Britain, Britain has a, has a, rich, has a rich heritage, has a rich heritage that spans more than, I could say more than 40 years. Now, uh, as a, a rich heritage more than 40 years. Now, for Britain, Britain has its roots. Uh, we had our roots in the in the in the in as a British American. That was uh, our initial name. But now, when you look at Britain, we have grown from being a a life uh, and a primary uh, home in in and to to become a local indigenous uh, local a leading lo uh, local indigenous brand that provides both. Uh, insurance, uh, life insurance, short-term short -term insurance and asset management uh, products, and also with portfolio investments, portfolio investments in, in property. So looking at uh, the asset management company, the asset management company was set up from a, from a need that we saw from driven by our clients where the, our clients were looking for additional advisory services touching, touching on, on their investments. And the asset management company was actually set up on 16th April, 2004. So I could say we were set up 10 years, uh, more, uh, more than 10 years ago, a week ago. So as an asset management company, we are, from humble beginnings, we have grown from uh, managing assets of uh, 28 billion to, to currently as at 31st December, we are managing assets of 235 billion. So when you look at our, our client base, we have retail client base of uh, 35 billion and we've uh, managing client, uh, client, client, uh, client funds here. We have our wealth management fund, we have our money market fund, and total clients uh, that you're managing is uh, 35 billion, and we have a client base of 20,000 20, clients. When you look at the institutional client base, we are managing close to 200 billion, and this 200 billion is uh, for leading corporates in, the, in, in Kenya. Uh, we are managing funds, you could say, of Safaricom, the top corporates in Kenya. Looking at our client offerings, so we have uh, retail client offerings where we have unit trusts, uh, wealth management, and also segregated funds and institutional clients. We are offering uh, pension, we manage pensions, and also gratuity funds, endowment funds, and segregated uh, uh, fund, manager, fund management for select corporates. We also have uh, a segment property where we are looking, we look to provide investment advisory services for our clients and also offer property investment opportunities for our, for, for our retail clients. Uh, asset, Britam Asset Management is owned by Britam Holdings. Uh, from my remarks, where Britam started has its roots as a as an insurer, we have grown from a life from 
a primary home uh, home home insurer insurer in in the 80s to a, to the to the leading life insurance company in Kenya and also we have short term insurance but when you look at uh, when you look at uh, Britam Britam today is uh, is I would say owned uh, is is a leading company that has uh, an institutional shareholder base and in the, the and our largest shareholders you is uh, you Africa Invest within Africa Invest you have the German government which is the DEG through their through the institutional uh, investment arm called DEG you have the French government through uh, through Popaco and then you have the Dutch government they jointly own 17.5% and then we also have uh, World Bank the World Bank uh, group through IFC owning 8.9% and then we also have Swiss Re Swiss Re which is the largest reinsurer in the world today we owning a 13.8% uh, shareholding so when you look at uh, the shareholding of uh, britam holding i would say we have capable and uh, i would say financial uh, financially stable shareholders holding more than 40% of britam holdings uh, for this particular introduction it would be strange for me to talk about britam and not talk about uh, change uh, from my introduction jerry missed mentioning that i'm a student of philosophy and from philosophy they will i learned about a philosopher called heraclitus where there's, there's usually there, there's always been a philosophical discussion on on re, on reality and change but one thing Heraclitus said, change is the only constant in, in life. So as Britam, we have seen changes and also we have seen positive change, growth. Uh, we have a new group managing director who took, from the, uh, who took over from uh, Dr. Wairegi, who led this organization from the 80s and uh, we have a new group managing director, Tava Madzinga. And with the new group man managing director, we also have a new strategy. And the, the key focus of our new strategy is customer centricity. Customer centricity where we are asking ourselves, what does our customer want to see? And our customer doesn't want to see all uh, the complexity. So when you look at our client set, we have realized our client set, we have a retail client set, we have a corporate client set, and also we have our uh, we have our inst institutional uh, specialized institutional client set and also we have our emerging consumer client set and also we have our digital client set so our new strategy in we intend to to offer to offer those client set uh, those client set particular product particular product that removes the complexity because when you look at uh, at insurance groups, because as Britam Asset Management, you are part of a, of a larger insurance group called Britam, Britam Group, which has Britam Holdings as the main shareholder. Insurance groups are seen as complicated, where you have four or five companies offering products. Like I can, I've seen some of the questions, when is the pensions AGM? It, it, for you as a client, you know Britam as one. So for me to sit here and tell you, uh, pension AGM is an, an, and another business, it will appear to you as Britam as complicated. Now, this new strategy intends to simplify how we approach you as a customer. When you're looking at, at you, when we are looking at you as a client, as our investment client within uh, asset management, we'll be asking you, uh, what about your other products with Britam? What is the level of client service? Because for us, we want to give you a good, return but at the same time we are concerned with we are, we are also concerned with you getting uh, uh, getting your insurance needs covered with britam so the new strategy is customer centric and for you I would, I would promise you we have good things coming and we'll be making some announcements over the next three weeks touching on the funds that we manage where we are looking at enhancing the return number one number two we are also looking at uh, seeing how we can 
further the uh, how we can deepen the distribution channel and make the uh, and make the product available available readily to you as a client so as i said change is the only constant that we are assured in in life so i'd i'd like to introduce our cio to take you through the economic overview uh, but for me, I would, I would like to give a broad view based from where I sit. Uh, looking at the, at, the, at the broad economic environment, our, our, gen, our general view is that 2020 was a lost year based on the pandemic. 2021, going to, the, to June, we will still face challenges. This pandemic, COVID, I would say, with the vaccination uh, vaccination drive, there's still some level of uncertainty. Uh, there have been talks of uh, a third boost uh, booster vac a dose of the vaccine. That just uh, tells you, just tells you that uh, this uh, pandemic, uh, it's it's a it's a new it's a new animal that uh, we are yet to figure. So 2021 would also be partly lost. And uh, so, uh, so we are we are we are foreseeing some 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 loosening of the restrictions that we saw in 2020, opening up in 2021. So it will be positive compared to 2020, and uh, and going to 2022 and 2023, we are seeing ourselves a full recovery because we from a lost year of 2020. So overall sentiment positive. So, but I'll leave the details to James Mose. He has more numbers that he can share and also the good things we have planned for you. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, thank you, thank you very much, uh, James. Um, and once again, um, good morning to clients. Um, I'll be taking us through um, our presentation today, uh, whereby we are looking at um, uh, the market, so we're looking at the global economy, how exactly the global economy uh, performed last year, uh, what's the expectation of the global economy this year, um, how was the Kenyan economy impacted uh, last year, uh, what sort of expectations do we have this year, um, what are our thoughts around the key macroeconomic variables, uh, for instance, um, the Kenya shilling against the dollar, uh, what's, uh, what are our expectations against, uh, rather, what are our expectations on inflation? Um, how do we expect inflation to fare this year as compared to last year? Uh, what, are, what are our thoughts about um, interest rates, uh, both short-term interest rates and long-term interest rates? Uh, where do we see the equity market uh, trending towards this year? And where do we see the offshore market um, uh, trending towards this year? I'll then go to our key retail products. Uh, this is uh, the wealth management product, uh, both Kenya shilling and, uh, and uh, dollar. I also look at um, the money market product, uh, just looking at the journey, how the funds have grown, the sort of returns these funds have been able to present to you and our expectations on how these returns should fare this year uh, going to, towards the end of the year. Um, I'll start with um, the global uh, economy. Um, as, as Jude um, just introduced, um, last year, uh, you can say was a lost year. Um, actually, the global economy um, last year did register a contraction um, of uh, negative 3.3%. Uh, um, the, the last time the global economy registered such a bad performance was in the 1930s. That is about 90, 90 years ago. I can, I can make a big guess here. I, I don't think uh, uh, there's any one of us who was alive then. Um, so this is something that uh, happens in a, in a lifetime. We don't expect to see this happening again in our lifetime, um, whereby the global economy shrinks uh, to that extent. Uh, but looking forward, and really the key reason as to why we had such bad performance last year was because of the shutdown. 
just to curtail the spread um, of COVID-19, um, the response across all, all the economies was locked down. So that meant there was no economic activity. So then what uh, that translated to is very minimal if at all there was any economic activity. Hence the reason as to why we are seeing such a, a massive uh, contraction of negative 3.3%. But looking forward um, to 2021, um, it, it's positive. I, I know um, I'm, I'm carefully using the word positive because we still with COVID-19, uh, uh, like for instance in Kenya, uh, we're, we're being subjected to some form of restriction. But as we compare ourselves to last year, we're coming off such a low base. And again, last year, everyone was caught unawares, at least now, as much as we've been subjected to these restrictions, um, we at least know something about COVID-19. So we've gotten a work around against COVID-19. Hence the reason as to why um, IMF um, is very optimistic that uh, this year the global economy will grow by a rate of uh, uh, 6%. Um, this is informed by the massive vaccine rollout that we're seeing globally um, and uh, the uh, responses um, that we've seen coming through from major central banks, whereby uh, they're basically throwing money at this problem um, so the economic stimulus um, that is impacting um, the, uh, the global economy uh, positively. And the reason as to why we look at the global economy then come to the Kenyan economy is because uh, the Kenyan economy doesn't uh, operate uh, in isolation. It doesn't operate in a vacuum. If for instance, there's a, a slowdown in the global economy, you'd expect that to impact us negatively. And if there's some form of recovery, positivity in the global economy, you'd expect that to impact us positively as well. Because for instance, we export our, our, our hot culture, we, we export our tea. So if then there's no market for us because there's limited economic activity, you'd expect that to translate to bad performance for us. Uh, so we can go to the next slide where we're looking at the Kenya uh, performance. So even Kenya, of course, was inspired last year. Um, as the global economy registered a um, contraction of 3.3%, um, uh, the Kenyan economy um, registered a uh, contraction of 0.1%. Uh, uh, better performance as compared to the global economy, but we've, we haven't seen this uh, form of uh, difficulty um, in the recent years. Uh, so our economy basically, there was no growth. Uh, you can say it came in flat uh, last year, uh, but looking forward to uh, 2021, um, quite optimistic. Um, the focus by IMF is that the Kenyan economy this year um, is going to grow by 7.6%. Um, uh, um, if you, IMF normally uh, looks at many countries and comes up with focus. So if you look at the focus that IMF has come up with um, for Sub-Saharan Africa uh, countries, we're talking about more than 40 countries. Actually, they're, the number is the highest for Kenya. Um, the next country uh, which has a higher growth um, focus um, as per IMF is Burkina Faso at 7.5%. All the rest are around between uh, five to 6%. So quite optimistic. Um, but as Britam asset managers, uh, we are not um, as op optimistic as IMF. Our number is anywhere between five to 6%. So it, it's much better as compared to last year. Still, we have this challenge, but we are seeing some form of reopening. Like for instance, last year, the education sector was basically shut uh, from March all the way to December. Uh, this year, uh, we've seen the schools uh, opening. And as much as yes, uh, we've been subjected to this, um, uh, we can call it um, lockdown, but according to the ministry and the government, they expect uh, schools to actually uh, reopen uh, next month. Um, so, um, and even um, uh, companies, companies have come up with a new normal on how to operate. So whereby they really shifted most of their operations um, to online, uh, digital. Uh, that wasn't the case last year because last year, most of these companies were caught unawares. So because of all those investments that companies made last year, uh, that's why um, there is this optimism that this year, the economy uh, might grow uh, anywhere 
uh, from 5 to 6% as per expectations. And if we go by IMF, um, up to 7.6%. Um, can go to the next slide. Inflation. Um, the reason as to why we look at inflation and why inflation matters, especially for you clients who've invested in our wealth management products, both Kenya Shilling, USD, and money markets, your return should always, the return that you're getting from our money market products, the return that you're getting from our, our wealth management products should at least be higher than inflation. Um, if inflation, for instance, is at say 10%, and the return that we're giving you um, is at 8%, then in real terms, we're not giving you any return because in inflation um, basically um, in, in very layman terms is the power of money, the purchasing power of money. Yeah, so if uh, 100 shillings um, last year uh, was able to buy you say a bread um, so the value of bread last year was 100 shillings. So if then we say inflation has gone up by 7%, uh, it, basically what it means is that the price uh, of that bread has now moved from 100 shillings to 107 shillings. So when inflation is moving at such a, a fast rate, the, the value of money is basically losing, uh, losing value at such a, um, a, a very fast rate. So, um, and that is true for even investment. So uh, for you to be able to make any meaningful returns and be able to make this money work for you, the, the return you're getting out, uh, from this money um, has to be higher than uh, the rate um, of inflation. So inflation, uh, if you look at our inflation rate um, uh, and how exactly inflation is computed, uh, about um, 36 to 40% of our inflation is explained by the direction food prices take. Um, cause um, uh, if, if you look at, at the normal uh, budget for Kenyan, um, and, and that's as per the Kenyan National Bureau of Statistics is that your budget um, about um, 35 to 40% of it um, is actually um, consumed uh, by food. Um, and if you look at the direction of our food prices, uh, that it's dictated by rainfall because we depend, we depend on rain. So last year we didn't receive um, very good rainfall. Um, it, 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 uh, it rained, but um, the rainfall was um, slightly below normal. Here's the reason as to why food inflation was elevated last year. But this year um, we've seen some form of reverse. Uh, the, rain, the rains have been adequate. Here's the reason as to why um, the food inflation has declined. And if we look at now our overall inflation as well, um, it, it's, it's remained largely stable. And our central bank has a target of uh, keeping our inflation anywhere between 2.5% to 7.5%. So as, as, a, as at end of March um, uh, this year, our inflation was at 5.9%. And our focus, we don't expect this inflation to um, go um, above 7.5%. We would expect it to largely remain between five um, to 7.5%. If I can share um, uh, an example, if you remember 2011, um, 2011, our inflation went all the way to 19%. Um, and that was true for interest rates. So if you remember in 2011, um, if we walked to a bank, if you came to Britain uh, and invested in our money market product, our return was higher than 20%. So there's normally a positive relationship uh, between the direction inflation takes and the direction interest rates take. So any day uh, you're coming to invest, uh, the question you should be asking is, where is inflation? Um, uh, is the return you're giving me higher than uh, the inflation rates? So if the answer is yes, then now we can start having a discussion. Then you can start looking at benchmarks as well. Where is the 91 day T-bill? Um, are you, are you um, competitive as compared to the 91 day table. So once um, all those responses are positive, then you can say we actually um, returning value to you um, as, as a customer. Then go to the next slide. Um, currency, um, currency as, uh, as well impacts uh, interest rates um, and also actually feeds to uh, inflation. Uh, so for instance, if you look at uh, the Kenya shilling and we're comparing the Kenya shilling with the dollar, 
because um, we largely, largely um, have our foreign um, uh, transactions happen uh, in the dollar. Um, so if you look at the dollar, Kenya shilling dollar movement, um, at the beginning of last year, um, if you had 102 shillings, you could buy one dollar. But because of the pandemic, um, everyone was like, uh, the dollar is the most stable currency and dollar investments are the most stable. So there was a global increased demand for dollar investments, uh, which translated to greater demand for the dollar. So all currencies started depreciating, losing value um, as compared to the dollar and the Kenyan shilling was not spared. So at the beginning of the year, you could buy uh, $1 for 102 shillings, but by end of the year, you could only uh, buy a dollar. Rather, uh, you couldn't, the 102 shillings that you, you could afford a dollar with at the beginning of the year were not sufficient. So you had to add to 110. Um, so the, the Kenyan shilling depreciated, lost value by close to eight shillings uh, to the dollar uh, last year. And um, for those who import cars, you saw it. Um, at the beginning of the year, last year, you could buy um, cars much cheaper, but by the end of the year, that price had gone up by almost more than 10%. Um, our outlook for the Kenya shilling um, uh, this year, um, as much as we foresee pressure that the Kenya shilling is likely to continue losing value um, against the dollar, but we don't foresee a situation whereby it will depreciate, it will lose value to the extent that it did last year. So we are looking at a modest depreciation of um, about 3% uh, this, uh, this year. Let's go to the next slide. Um, for interest rates, and now this is closer to um, our investments, and especially the shorter term interest rates. Um, last year, uh, the, I mean, just look at the 91 day T bill, the one each two day T bill, uh, 364. If, for instance, you're investing in uh, treasury bills, so giving the money to the government, uh, these rates were uh, on a downward trend, um, a better part of last year. And the key reason as to why this was the case is because um, if you look at the participants uh, in treasury uh, bills, it's mostly banks. Um, and because of the uncertainty that COVID-19 presented last year, banks were not willing to lend. Yeah, so because um, in their own estimation is that if we extend loans um, to businesses, um, to our customers, um, seeing that uh, they'd go deploy these loans in their businesses, there's so much uncertainty, uh, the, the demand uh, has really declined, high chances are that these loans won't be serviced. So the best thing we need to do is reduce the amount that we are extending in loans and just pack the money, invest the money in treasury bills. That increased demand for treasury bills, so interest rates declining. Yeah. So uh, the uncertainty is still there this year, uh, but not as much as last year. So sharing, I mean, just if you can remember from even the GDP focus, we expect the economy to start recovering. So even the banks uh, have started um, um, pricing in this positively. And they're more optimistic that uh, uh, eventually we'll get out of. Uh, uh, this COVID-19 situation, they've started extending and uh, loans and lending. So the liquidity, the, the, the too much money last year that was being uh, put to treasury bills has reduced. It's not as much as last year. So that's the reason as to why we've seen, for instance, uh, in quarter one from January to March this year, interest rates starting to trend, uh, to trend upwards. But there is something that has happened, and this has happened uh, in the past like two weeks, uh, that might um, stop that upward trend of interest rates. Um, this, the IMF loan uh, that uh, the government um, has been able to secure, uh, the government has been able to secure a 2.4 billion um, IMF uh, loan. Uh, this is a facility for um, three years, so it will be drawn the government will be able to access all this 2.4 uh, billion over a three year period. So this is likely to reduce the appetite for money uh, from the government. So the reduced appetite for money um, might see um, interest rates starting to decline because 
if for instance the government is desperate, they're coming in for so much money, so as investors will punish them and ask for higher rates. But now if they're reducing the amount of money they're, they're asking, um, so then we have also to be moderate because at the end of the day, we'd want some money invested in government treasury bills and government treasury bonds. So the direction of interest rates would expect it to be largely stable uh, with a downward trend. And go to the next slide. Uh, this is true for longer longer term interest rates. Uh, the same um, factors that saw interest rates last year, uh, the short term interest rates decline last year, um, did affect long term interest rates as well. And the outlook for longer term interest rates as well um, is that um, they will be largely stable um, with a downward trend because of that line uh, that um, uh, the government has been able to secure the money that the government has been able to secure. Uh, from the IMF. And also the government is planning uh, to do a euro bond, uh, to borrow uh, money in dollars. Um, that as well um, uh, is likely to reduce the demand uh, for local borrowing. So all that points towards the bolization of interest rates, um, even um, a decline uh, in interest rates. Uh, the equity market, here we're looking at a trend how exactly the equity market has performed going back uh, five years. If you look at that graph, uh, it's really been dancing um, up and down. Um, and this is typical uh, of the equity asset class. It's very volatile, the risk is higher, but there's opportunity. So if for instance, last year, uh, because of uh, the effects of COVID-19, we saw our market decline by uh, close to eight to 9%. Uh, but at some point last year, uh, the market had declined all the way down close to 25 percent but towards the end of last uh, last year towards the end of the year we saw some bit of uh, recovery that's the reason as to why the full year performance last year was not as bad um but if if you look at this equity market if for instance you just buy shares and you don't do anything uh, you can't make money um, the strategy is called buy and hold if you just buy shares uh, in this market and you don't do anything you can't make money and those are the sort of challenges that we are seeing with, uh, for instance, the balanced fund, um, our, our balanced uh, fund our, and our equity, uh, our equity fund, because largely, uh, because now even uh, the regulators introduced the minimum allocation that you need to have uh, in the equity asset class. Then if, for instance, uh, you need to observe uh, maybe a minimum allocation of the fund, maybe 60% needs to be in equity. Um, uh, and, and then a year, uh, like last year, uh, plays itself, uh, or replays itself, then you, you're likely going to underperform. Because of this, we've seen an opportunity um, to introduce a fund that only goes uh, into the equity market when we are very constructive that the equity market is going to perform well. And when that outlook changes, and we believe now the prices have almost gotten to the top, we sell out of the equity market and invest in interest bearing assets. So in the right time, um, our customers will be also, will be calling you um, again for such a session, a webinar uh, to launch this fund that should be able to uh, subject you to the equity market when uh, the equity market is performing well. And that should translate um, to you uh, making very decent, uh, decent returns. Um, so the outlook for our equity market this year, it's actually a recovery. Um, so far, quarter one, we've seen the equity market going up by uh, close to uh, 4%. Uh, Year-to-date performance has actually gotten to uh, almost 8%, um, 8% this year. And um, our outlook is that this year, the equity market is likely to do a um, register performance of anywhere between 10 uh, to 15%. Um, we can go to the next slide. So for the offshore markets, um, offshore markets, the offshore equity markets um, have also done well, just like our equity market this year. Um, and, and the reason as to why this has been the case, it's because, um, be, uh, because um, this, of all the global, I mean, just look at the developed markets, the central banks have been trying to support their, uh, uh, their economies by uh, making sure that interest rates are very low. Um, so, uh, for investors, um, it, it's been lack of choice because, for instance, if you invest in a government, um, a 10 year uh, US uh, government bond, it's only yielding 1.5%. Uh, 
because of those low interest rates that actually if you go now to Europe, the rates are even below zero. Um, investors have just been packing their money in the equities markets. And that's the reason as to why the equity markets have been performing pretty well. And also the equity markets have been also preempting the recovery, the global recovery that is anticipated this year. And even into next year, uh, market, uh, the, the, economy, the global economy is expected to uh, even recover further because of all the vaccine rollouts that are happening. And, and, and also uh, this is meant to translate um, to more reopenings of the economy. And this should then translate to um, competitive uh, corporate earnings, uh, which um, should impact the prices uh, positively. Now we can go to um, the key um, funds that we're going to take us through today. Uh, this is the um, Wealth uh, Kenya Shilling Fund, uh, the Wealth USD Fund, and uh, the Money Market Fund. How exactly these funds have been performing um, historically, and our outlook on how exactly we expect these funds to perform uh, going forward. Looks like we're experiencing some technical challenges. Okay, um, sorry for that. Um, Um, once again, um, customers, sorry for that. Um, the presentation just disappeared from my end. Um, has the reason as to why uh, we've had that um, uh, challenge whereby I haven't continued presenting for the last like maybe two minutes. So um, like I said, we'd want now to go through um, our key uh, retail products uh, that you've invested in. Um, this is the Wealth Kenya Shilling Fund, um, uh, Kenya Shilling, and then the Wealth uh, Management Fund, um, uh, USD, and then the Money Market Product. Here we'll be looking at um, the asset allocation, what exactly these funds invest in, how are we able to uh, deliver the returns that um, we are uh, delivering to you, uh, what instruments do we invest in. So if we start with the Wealth um, Kenya Shilling Fund. Um, the fund um, invests in interest bearing assets. So it's purely invest in fixed income. So it invests in treasury bonds, um, invest in treasury bills, uh, invest in bank deposits, invest in corporate bonds and commercial paper. Uh, as a customer, these opportunities are available to you. Um, actually like today, uh, you may decide you'd want to um, invest in treasury bills directly, you can. You can invest in treasury bonds directly. You can go negotiate with a bank um, for a deposit. And you can even um, also uh, negotiate with a corporate. If for instance, the corporate is raising money 
uh, for a period uh, less than um, one year, uh, you can negotiate so that you can give them money. That's called a commercial paper. And that's the difference between commercial papers and corporate bonds because corporate bonds are now longer um, than uh, uh, lo longer than the 364 days. But the, the reason as to why it may not be beneficial to you, for instance, you went and negotiated for yourself directly, it's because you won't have the economies of scale um, to be able to get a higher rate. So for instance, using the monies that you get from you whereby, um, like for instance, looking at uh, wealth management product, we have more than um, 3,000 of you who've invested in the fund. That gives us the skill to be able now to talk to a bank. And for instance, the bank will have given you a rate of like 6%, but because we are using so much money, um, we are able to negotiate now for a higher rate of like 9% or 10%. Similar to um, also uh, treasury bonds, we're able, because um, we have more information uh, we're able to know where exactly the government um, is likely to accept uh, money up to, then we, we, that's the rate that we demand from the government. That explains the competitive returns then we're able to, uh, to give to you. Okay, go to the next slide. This is a journey of how the Wealth Management Fund um, has moved since the year that um, we launched it in 2011. Um, to last year. It, it's been a very successful story and um, this is an opportunity to thank you again uh, for partnering with us, journeying with us. You can see the fund has grown uh, from just a billion in 2011 to last year where it closed at 31, um, 31 billion. The rates for this fund, uh, you can see they've been changing. So the Isaiah, uh, the rate was as high as um, say um, upwards of uh, 13%, um, some years 11%, 12%. Um, and this year we saw the rate um, declining to levels of about 8%. Now it's back up to 9%. And just to explain how exactly we get this rate, this rate is informed by the underlying investments this fund makes. So the underlying investments are the investments I just shared. So it's the investment in treasury bills, treasury bonds, uh, commercial papers and corporate bonds. If those rates move up, we're able to pass this benefit to you. And if the rates decline, then of course you'd expect the rate for this fund to decline as well. Like we said last year, interest rates were declining. And that was the reason as to why um, even the wealth management fund rate was affected. But as we said in quarter one this year, the rate has been rates have been trending upwards. Here's the reason as to why we've been able to move from eight 8.5%, now we are at 9% and would want to maintain this rate um, at those levels uh, to be as competitive um, as possible. Can we go to the next slide? Um, and here we're just looking at this rate that the fund has been able to register uh, over the period. How does it compare um, to, for instance, um, deposit rates? How does it compare to the 91 day table? If for instance, you went like I was saying, you went to a bank, those are the sort of rates you'll be getting. Uh, the bank rates on average are like, for instance now, it's 6.2%. That's what you can get from a bank. Um, you give the money to the government, the government will give you 7%. But then if you brought the money to us, uh, invested in the wealth management product, are uh, you able to get 9% uh, for three months, um, six months and 12 months. Then go to the next slide. Here we're looking at the wealth management fund dollar. So similar invests, it invests in similar uh, products, um, rather similar um, asset, uh, asset, sub asset classes. So it invests in euro bonds. The reason as to why the key difference between this fund, the sort of investments this fund makes as compared to wealth Kenya shilling is the currency. Um, wealth Kenya shilling invests in Kenya shilling denominated instruments, Kenya shilling, um, treasury bonds, treasury bills, but now wealth dollar invests uh, in bonds that are dollar denominated. This can be the euro bonds, like for instance, Kenya, like I said, is planning to issue a euro bond. So that's an instrument that this fund can take advantage of, invest in deposits that are dollar denominated, corporate bonds that are dollar denominated and commercial papers that are dollar denominated. Um, this fund, um, these are exactly it's grown uh, over the period um, from 2017 
um, when we launched it uh, to last year, uh, where it closed just under a billion. I'm happy to report that now uh, this fund has, um, has gone above um, a billion can shillings. So it's gone above $10 million. Uh, and the rates as well are pretty competitive. So for instance, like I was saying, um, uh, dollar deposits, even locally, the best you can get from a bank um, is anywhere be between one to 2%. But this fund we're able, based on our Eurobond investments, we're able to pass to you a return upwards of 3%. And if you're willing to invest for us for a year, um, this return can get uh, to 4%. This is the um, performance of the fund um, as compared to uh, the alternatives, so deposits, you can see the very the rates are very low. Um, and even, uh, for instance, if you chose to even invest in a, a US bond, which is five years or even 10 years, the rate will be lower than the rate that this fund is offering. And go to the money market uh, fund. Um, money market, uh, the difference between the instruments that money market fund invests um, as compared to the wealth a management fund Kenya shilling is the tenor. Um, money market, our money market fund is as good as a call account, um, whereby you can, as, as you are planning for your money, yeah. So you have this project that you're planning, uh, you're saving towards a wedding, you're saving towards um, starting maybe um, a project in, in a month, two months, um, saving towards fees. Um, this is the perfect home for you. Yeah, so even the instruments are much shorter. Uh, the instruments that we invest in are much shorter as compared to uh, the uh, wealth management fund can a shilling. So it's deposits, shorter term deposits. The bonds are quite short term. So we're talking about bonds below five years. Um, and mostly we invest in these bonds to trade, not to um, invest in them for the five years, but we are buying and then selling even before um, end of a year. Uh, treasury bills, uh, corporate bonds that are, that are shorter, and commercial papers. Yeah, this has been the journey for this fund. Um, it's been, or the growth has also been um, quite phenomenal. Um, and if you look at where the fund closed last year, um, it actually went above 10 billion uh, can shilling mark. Um, and as we speak now currently, um, the fund is around 12, um, it's above 12 billion. So again, thank you very much for supporting this fund. Um, so the current rate this fund is offering is 8.6%. And we are also doing um, a lot of work uh, to get that rate above uh, 9%. Um, so um, the fund, um, I mean, the rate is competitive as compared to say an n 12 t bill, but we'd want it to average anywhere between nine to 9.5%, which it did uh, the better part of last year. That's where we want to get the rate to, and it will get there shortly. Can you go to the final slide? Yeah, so um, customers, so I'd want to conclude uh, my presentation with, uh, with an outlook. Um, so basically, uh, this uh, slide summarizes um, the presentation that I've been making in the past um, 20 uh, to 30 minutes. Um, our outlook as regards to interest rates is that would expect interest rates to be largely stable with a downward bias. Uh, this is because of um, the IMF uh, loan that the government has been able to secure and even the planned euro bond that the government is planning to borrow. So this is meant to reduce the pressure or the desperation of the government to accept higher interest rates in the market. But we see this as an opportunity to trade uh, in bonds uh, both for the wealth Kenya shilling fund and the money market product. Here's the reason as to why we expect the rate for money market to get to 9% and the rate for our wealth uh, management fund Kenya shilling to average anywhere between 9 to 9.5%. For the equities, uh, this year is a recovery year for our equity market. Um, would expect a return of anywhere between 10 to 15%. And just to take advantage of the volatility, because the equity market this year can give you 15%. Next year, it declines by 20, 30%. But to take advantage of the positive years, um, we are working on a fund, uh, which will be launching um, uh, 
towards the tail end of this year to take advantage of this and we'll be calling you um, to such a forum um, to share with you the good news. Offshore, um, we also expect the offshore equities to perform well this year. Uh, but if you look at offshore uh, interest rates, we'd expect them to be pretty low. Um, but um, uh, our wealth uh, USD fund would expect the rates to average between um, 325 to 4% for a better part of this year. And uh, it's an opportunity for you to take um, advantage. Uh, clients, this marks then the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, back to you, Pasi. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you Mose. Maybe some small take home is that uh, you had a very positive outlook on everything. And uh, just to note, in terms of the Kenyan economy, you've mentioned five to six percent, and IMF is very optimistic of it going up to seven point six percent. Um, again, you went ahead to speak about inflation, which is the rising in cost of living. And here, I think we've even noticed food prices went up. Fuel prices, I think we've seen the number of SMSs that are coming through in terms of the price is going up. Now, there's a question on the currency that you've mentioned that we're looking at it uh, depreciating further by 3%. And uh, right now it's at 107%. So what has caused the changes? This has been raised by Daniel. And I think you can respond to that. And I go to the next question before we proceed. Okay. Um, thank you, Pasi, and thank you, uh, Daniel. Um, we, uh, Daniel, you're right. Um, the, Kenya shilling closed at uh, one of my um, uh, last year, having depreciated by about seven point uh, seven percent last year. Um, we've seen some form of recovery, uh, whereby the shilling has moved to around one or seven. Um, and then part of the reason as to why uh, this has been the case, uh, it's because uh, one, there was the uh, IFB bond uh, that was. Um, uh, auctioned uh, about uh, two weeks ago, uh, whereby the government was uh, looking to raise uh, about 60 billion Kenyan shillings. Uh, because the IFP bonds are normally tax exempt, uh, foreigners love such bonds. So there was a lot of appetite for um, these bonds from the foreign investors. Uh, so because uh, the foreign investors, um, for them to invest in this bond, they have to convert their dollars to Kenyan shillings. So that demand for um, the Kenya shillings, um, so the Kenya shillings starting to appreciate. And also um, in anticipation of uh, uh, the 35 billion that uh, the government uh, has received uh, from the IMF, which is part of the 2.4 billion that, uh, uh, 2.4 billion dollars, uh, which is about 250 billion Kenya shillings that the government has been able to secure uh, from IMF. That, the 35 billion came in about um, two weeks ago as well. Um, so um, it came in in dollars. Um, so that as well um, uh, has been the reason as to why we've seen uh, the appreciation, appreciation of the currency to 107 levels. But um, as the economy opens up, yeah, so once we get out of these restrictions, then our exports uh, start, rather our imports start picking up yeah, whereby now we start uh, uh, in, uh, importing, um, importing more. So that's demand for the dollar. Uh, and also the fact that fuel prices are expected to trend upwards, we're importing fuel, uh, that's also demand for dollar. That um, points towards seeing the shilling depreciate to levels of 109 and like even getting to 110, 111. Hence our outlook that this year, the sort of depreciation that we'll see for uh, the Kenya shilling is not the level of 7.7 .7 last year, but a modest one of around 3%. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Mose. Um, next question is about what you mentioned, that you're looking to start a fund that will be active in terms of buying shares when they're cheap and selling when they're actually quite uh, price is good. And someone has asked, has this strategy ever worked globally? Uh, yes, that's, that's a very good uh, question. Yes, uh, this has worked um, because this is a fund that is going to be asset class neutral. So it's going to move uh, between uh, the equity market and uh, the interest bearing assets market. It's worked because what exactly you do 
um, you may not be able to time the markets perfectly, like buy the, uh, into the equity market uh, when the market is that it's cheapest, but the normal indicators that show you that the market is like now to start trending upwards. Maybe by then the market has gone up by say two, two, two to three percent. So that's the time you buy. As the market rallies um, to the level of say 10, 15 percent, um, they, they, there'll still be an opportunity for the market to run maybe all the way to up to 20%. But you have the discipline to sell before it gets there. Then move the money to, um, uh, to bonds. Um, as bonds and deposits, as you wait for another uh, uh, cycle, because the market operates in a cycle. So there's a time it will be, uh, it will be performing very badly. There's a time it will be performing um, very well, and there are normally indicators uh, uh, towards so those cycles. So it's just being able to read those cycles well in advance and making moves before it's obvious to everyone. So it's worked. It's worked uh, uh, elsewhere. Okay, thank you, Mosa. I think we'll be on the lookout in terms of the new product that is coming up, and if it will be as responsive as uh, you're saying, this is one product that is really going to shake up this market, and. Um, just, Just to mention, mention Mohammed has also asked a question in terms of the recent drop of wealth management from 9% to 8% in the last quarter was an 11% drop. Are we looking, uh, then a the quick return to 9%. Um, can we now expect stability going forward? Um, thank you, Mohammed. That's, that's a very good question. Um, the rates for our money market product, and that, that's true even for our money markets, product uh, is explained by uh, the average rate that we're getting from the underlying investments that we've made. So um, the, our wealth management product has invested in uh, bank deposits, has invested in uh, treasury bills, has invested in treasury bonds. So if the rate for these underlying instruments decline, you'd expect that to impact uh, the rates uh, of our wealth management product and even impact the rates uh, of our money market uh, fund. But what we're trying to do is um, try as much as we can uh, to take advantage of bond trading um, to smoothen the rates and, and even keep the rates high. Um, so our endeavor is to try as much as we can to keep the rates stable. Um, hence our outlook that the, for a better part of this year, um, expect the rate to range anywhere between a nine to 9.5%. But it's possible, there's a the possibility, for instance, rates collapse, the rate can drop uh, below nine. But as of now, we don't foresee that um, because uh, like I say, if for instance, interest rates drop as we expect, we'll increase the size of our bond, our bond book, trade more, and that should be able to uh, bring more stability to the rate. So the direct response uh, um, to you, Mohammed, is that uh, based um, on our estimation and our focus, we expect the rate to be largely um, stable between 9 to 9.5%. Uh, and uh, this, of course, doesn't uh, uh, price in, uh, for instance, uh, if there's such a big surprise uh, ahead of us, but we don't foresee such a big surprise. So uh, avoiding a big surprise, um, we expect the rate to be largely stable between 9 to 9.5%. Okay, thank, thank you, you Mosa. Um, clients had request that we hold off on the questions. We're going to have a QA and a session at the end. We're actually about uh, to come to the end of the session. Next, we'll move on to the FAQs, frequently asked questions for the Wealth Management Fund. And this is about the changes in the rate that has just occurred. How does it affect us as clients? And what are we planning to do? So what is the new indicative rate of return? So the indicative rate of return is 9% for three months, six months tenors, and 12 months tenors. These rates are effective from 19th of April, 2021, that is on Monday. How will this change affect my current investment? The new wealth management will only affect rollovers for the matured investments, that is on and after 19th, however, uh, investments that are coming in, that is the top-ups as well as new investments, they will be able to get into this particular new indicative rate. 
Now, customers will be able to roll over at the new rate during a grace period of 10 days between 19th and 30th of April. And here, what we're saying is we're not going to charge you any penalty. If you had invested at 8% or 8.5%, what we're saying is for the remainder of the term of the investment, we are going to uh, request your permission to actually invest these funds at 9%. However, if we do not get feedback from you, we will again contact your financial advisor or relationship manager to reach out to you to give us the consent to actually do this. Our last resort will be again to uh, automatically invest into this particular fund, into this particular rate, so that you don't miss out on uh, this offer. How will I, will I still be able to access my funds upon request? Yes, our teams are equipped and will continue to handle the daily transactions as and when they come in. These are the withdrawals, the top ups. This will continue as normal. Um, the only thing is due to the limitations caused by safety measures undertaken, uh, we might have to extend our turnaround time to the maximum four days that you normally work with. But of late, we've been working with one uh, 24 hours to 48 hours and we've been meeting those ones. If it's an emergency, please let us know in advance or you can, you can indicate on the form or on the email when you're sending if you, have, if you already have an indemnity uh, form that you are filled in to give instructions on email. Do you anticipate further changes in the wealth management rates? I think this MOSE has been able to provide an answer on the same. But may, let me just add that should changes occur, they do not affect your existing contracts. How will this change affect top ups? I've already explained about this top-ups and new investments will be able to enjoy the new rate. So clients, we now invite uh, about three to five questions, again, in the interest of time. Um, if you can raise up your hand, if you have any question, um, if we do not see any hands raised up, we're going to pick the questions from the chat and address them. We have already, uh, Daniel, we have already answered the question on uh, the 107 to the dollar. Uh, we've already answered the questions about the unit, starting a unit that will buy shares. Um, again, um, Daniel, thank you for your query. We've, uh, we've answered that. What caused the recent drop from Mohamed Wanyoike? We've answered that. Daniel Gidido, what impact will the printing of excess cash in America have to the Kenya shilling? I think, Mose, you'll be able to tackle that. Henry Chiara, what do you think is the effect of the regulations in the tea sector that are causing so much uncertainty? And Daniel, again, uh, will you get into cryptocurrency? Mose, you can handle those three. Okay. Then we... <clears throat> right, yeah. So the, the first question is around um, uh, what, what's the... Impact of uh, prosthetic easing, the printing of cash uh, in the US um, in the Kenya shilling. Um, so you, you'd expect that if there is an increase in the amount of money in supply, um, that should reduce the price of your money relative to other currencies. So uh, prosthetic easing should see, should have seen the dollar depreciate against. Um, other currencies in normal times. But what's happening currently, it's a, an abnormal time, whereby because of the pandemic, uh, investors are preferring to invest in dollar denominated um, investments uh, because they're considering the dollar safer as compared to the rest of the other uh, currencies. So the increased demand for dollar has neutralized the effect of the Federal Reserve increasing the money supply. Uh, so 
um, still even with the quantitative easing, uh, with the uh, printing of more dollars, we don't expect the dollar to depreciate in the near term. We actually expect uh, currencies to continue um, um, uh, depreciating against the dollar. So that's the reason as to why we expect, for instance, the Kenyan shilling to depreciate by uh, about 3% uh, to the dollar. Um, there's a question around, um, are we considering getting into crypto uh, currency? Um, it's a big, big, big discussion globally, um, whereby um, major central banks uh, cross a uh, pronounce themselves. Um, they haven't re recognized uh, crypto. Even the, uh, our central bank um, has pronounced, uh, uh, central bank governor here has pro pronounced himself. Um, he hasn't recognized cryptocurrency. So um, if, for instance, you got um, uh, into crypto uh, investments here and something went bad, you're not backed by any, any regulations and there's no regulator will be behind you. Because um, we make business of uh, giving you uh, competitive returns, but not competitive returns at a price of losing your principal. So, uh, we we'll only, uh, for instance, consider um, investments into Bitcoin, uh, other cryptocurrencies, once they are acceptable as a medium of exchange. Uh, because now, uh, as much as, uh, I mean, people have made some money in Bitcoins, uh, there's the other uh, side whereby a lot of people have as well lost a lot of money uh, in Bitcoin. So the direct response to that question is uh, not at the moment. Um, the last question is, what do you think is the effect of uh, regulations in the tea sector that are causing so much uncertainty? Um, so we, we, we see the reason as to why government would want to be involved. Um, this is because of uh, the fact that uh, the prices that uh, farmers have been getting as compared to the auction prices, there's such a big discrepancy and disparity whereby uh, there was a general feeling by the Ministry of uh, Agriculture and uh, the government at large that farmers were being taken advantage of. So we support uh, the involvement uh, of government to ensure that uh, farmers are getting value uh, for their efforts. But as of now, of course, um, it's presenting all these as I think because it's being fought by some counties. Um, it doesn't look like all the governors are aligned yeah, so the uncertainty as of now, it's not uh, really helping. But longer term, we think this is a good move by the government to see that the farmers are getting value uh, for their efforts. Um, Sophie Karanja, kindly send us the presentation. The FAQs were practically illegible. Yes, we are going to send. That's why I was actually reading them out. Uh, thank you for that note. Um, are you looking to offer into offering a product that exposes clients to global markets and then diverse portfolio offering? This is from George Wangendo. Okay. That's, that's a good question. Uh, the, the fund that um, uh, we talked about, um, this fund um, is not just going to look at uh, the equities markets locally uh, and uh, the, uh, the interest bearing assets or fixed income. Uh, markets just locally, it will also be looking at offshore markets as well. So this fund will be able to give you exposure to offshore markets. Just a clarification, clients with existing WMF investments all benefit from the new rates. Uh, Job Garuro, um, yes, these are clients that are currently who had invested below 9%. And like we said, we are reaching out to all the clients that had invested at a lower rate so that they take advantage and get to invest in the new rate. Is it possible to consider the existing clients? Yes, we've already, we've already mentioned this. We're going to look into that. Can you convert an investor's funds from Kenya Shilling to USD upon application? Again, if you're going to use the funds in USD and you have already invested um, in Kenya Shilling, yes, you can actually be able to do the conversion. Um, uh, 
on the tax element, why don't you withhold 15% for, for tax for companies as required by law? Um, Eva Matara is on call. I would request that you respond to that as we proceed. Eva? Patricia, you can also respond to this. Oh, okay. Eva Matara is online. Eva, if you can unmute yourself. Patricia, you can assist. I think Eva is having some technical issues. Okay, um, thank you very much, Njeri. Yes, um, the question is around um, for companies. Um, this, is, this is really due to the fact that um, uh, the, the way the uh, withholding tax is managed is that we're not able to give you one-on-one -on -one withholding tax uh, specifically to your investment, this being an LLP and being the fact that it's a CIS. So because um, the, the withholding tax is not final for companies, then the direction then is to give you gross um, as a company, and then you can be able to then um, um, account for the tax uh, uh, for yourself uh, as, as, as a company. However, for individuals, the withholding tax is a final tax, so they are not required to, um, uh, what do you call it, to, to account, for, uh, account for the taxes uh, as an individual. However, uh, for the specific uh, client who has asked that, I do request that, uh, that you take time and uh, send us an email at AMC to, to the AMC customer service email so that then we are able to engage with you one-on-one -on -one and take you through the different um, applications of the tax for your understanding and to be able to assist you uh, ensure that you give your returns uh, correctly. Thank you, Patricia, for that. Um, Mose, I think there's another question on that. Um, Juliet Mwange has mentioned my current rate is 9.5, which is due for rollover in June. Does it mean I will get a lower rate? Juliet, we will again look at the opportunities available by the time you're rolling over. Remember, the wealth management rate changes on a week on week basis. However, we've been able to retain certain rates for a specific period of time. And at this point, we are able to secure um, an opportunity at 9%, which is what we've been able to present to all the clients and which we are saying clients will participate. Now, if by good luck in June, we have a higher rate than 9.5, you will be able to participate in that. If the opportunity will be lower than 9.5, um, then that is what we present to the clients because like I mentioned, the rates change on a week on week basis. Kenny Karanja, 364T bill is at 9.4 while you're offering 9% yet we pay a management fee and wire flat rate across three, six and 12 months. Okay. Um, uh, thank, thank you for that question. Um, yeah, you, you're right. The 364D table um, is currently at 9.4%. Um, uh, 9, 9 um, so what would encourage you um, uh, to do is um, to, to consider more of the uh, three-month uh, opportunity and the six-month opportunity. Uh, because our outlook, like I said, we expect the T-bill rates to start declining. Uh, uh, once, uh, like now, for instance, uh, this IMF money starts to come in already, 35 billion um, out of the 260 billion has come in. More is expected to come in by June. We expect another um, about uh, 40 billion um, to come in before, before June, so that by June, uh, the government will have access close to 78 billion of that IMF money. That will see the T bill rate starting to collapse from their current levels. Um, so uh, the advice I'll give is that 
um, as a now take advantage of the 9%, uh, but invest uh, then for a period of uh, uh, three, uh, three months and, and, and six months. From uh, John Yaga, any reason why you cannot fix a minimum of say three months investment period and then leave the rest open up to 12 months? Okay, the question is any reason why you cannot fix a minimum of um, say three months investment period, then leave the rest open up to um, 12 months? Four months, five months. Um, I'm not John, very clear with the question. Uh, for John, uh, when you look at, uh, when you look at uh, our, our product offering, we usually, we usually pair an opportunity with a client. So when we're offering three, six, uh, nine, and uh, 12 months is because we have opportunities that meet that particular set. So that's why we cannot afford to, to leave it open so that we can, have a, we can match the returns. The opportunity set was, pro, was presented by MOSE where we're looking at uh, co uh, commercial papers, you're looking at bank deposits, you're looking at government bonds. So for us to achieve perfect matching and to ensure that we are giving you the correct underlying return, that's why we have clustered our, 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 our target, target as per those particular months. Thank you. Thank you. There being no further questions, uh, we'd like to come to the end of this particular webinar. Thank you for participating, clients. Thank you for your support. We have received enormous emails in terms of clients wanting to join, the ones that uh, had invested below 9%, and we are responding to all these queries. You will also receive phone calls from the business development teams and also your financial advisors. Feel free to contact us through client services email, through the relationship and sales email for any further queries that you may have. Um, any tax query, please send it to us so that we can be able to assist one-on-one -on -one basis. And uh, thank you everyone for attending. We have a small poll. Um, did you find this webinar informative? And uh, you just need to click on, the, on your screen and let us know if uh, yes, no, or you need more information and we should be reaching out to the same. So the poll is open for 30 seconds. Maybe just to mention the ones who joined late, we are going to share the presentation with you so that you're able to catch up on what was discussed. Majority of it was actually the good news about the rate going back up from eight to 8.5 and all the way to 9% and what facilitated that particular improvement in the rates and also a global outlook that has been given to all the participants. So thank you very much. We are sharing the results right now. So 87% yes um, uh, and 13% I need more information and we are here for you. We are definitely going to provide that. Feel free to reach out. Have a lovely day and thank you very much. Stay safe, God bless.